Hello and welcome to the Microsoft 365 Train the Trainer Part 8. I know it seems like uh, forever that we've been going through this series, uh, but uh, this is this is the time. This is what we typically go through when we're training organizations individually, and we had to break it down because no one wants to sit through a, a how long of a video would that be? That eight-hour video. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> uh, welcome to Part Eight. Uh, this is where all of the things that we've been working on all the things and the exercises and the effort of the design and the planning start coming together uh, where you start leveraging how can SharePoint start making an intuitive way for your team to access the information they need. This session we're going to be focusing on if you're potentially a department head and responsible for just a piece of your SharePoint environment, uh, what do the web parts look like? How can you create other pages? How do you put the navigation together? And then next series, so part nine, and this is going to be the final part of the uh, Train the Trainer uh, uh, Driving Adoption series, uh, is we're putting that all together into an intuitive navigation that includes all of those uh, communication sites uh, that you may be building for the different departments, even uh, team sites, if that's applicable to how you want to design it. Uh, but part eight, uh, I want to hand it over to Nina. And by the way, I'm Nate. That doesn't really matter. That's not why you're here. But Nate, Nina's going to be really the smart person that's going to be guiding us through today, uh, getting into SharePoint communication sites and uh, design and navigation for uh, building a site. As if, and, and put yourself in the place for today's session as if you're that department head or uh, that champion uh, part of that department, like an, uh, an HR, like for instance, we're going to be going through an HR site. Um, this could be a marketing site. This could be a, an internal IT site. This could be a operational site. This something that's more designed around what a department head or a department might want to use SharePoint to communicate to the organization. So with that said, Nina, take it away for part eight of the Train the Trainer series. Thanks, Nate. Uh, just a quick look at our agenda for today. So just a quick two or three minutes. I want to review what we did in the last SharePoint session as we started building out that communication site. Um, I want to dig in a little bit more today on some of the web parts, things that I've seen work really well with clients that we work with. Um, and then you know, from there, where do I, how do I go about further building this out? So having additional pages that I can potentially link to and how do I link that to my communication side? Where do they live? Very importantly, um, I remember starting out with SharePoint and then creating the page and couldn't get back to it again and wasn't sure where it was. So very key piece to know there as well. Uh, looking at the specific site navigation um, and then for the next session, we're going to be put, putting all of that together. So if we're now we're very much focused in on one department like HR uh, again as Nate said it could be marketing it could be IT um, but in the next session we're going to look at how do we actually pull all of those department sites together um, using a hub site and how do we make the navigation really easy to use how do we make it intuitive um, how do we do things like audience targeting so we want to make sure that specific links are relevant to people we don't want them to be clicking on a link and then they get an access denied notice or something to that effect um, and then also leveraging Viva connections so that I can actually start tying my SharePoint site in with Microsoft Teams. Uh, we've really found that um, the easier we can make it for people to get there, the more likely they are to use it and to adopt it. But if they have to leave Teams and then you know go hunt down SharePoint and then the navigation isn't intuitive, those are all things that are very typically roadblocks to people adopting some of this. So with that being said, I am going to hop into our SharePoint site that we had created the last time. Uh, so this, uh, in this particular use case, uh, we were building out a communication site for human resources. Uh, just really quickly, again, uh, the difference between a team site, which is really uh, more for uh, internal use, if you're thinking of Microsoft Teams, some of those groups that maybe you participate in, whereas what we're building here is where we want to share some of those final published versions of documents, things like policies and procedures, um, employee handbooks, that type of thing. We don't really want people to be changing them or editing them. We want to make them a read-only copy, but we do want to make it easily available across the organization, which is where the communication site comes in. So in our last session, uh, we created this using one of the out-of-the-box templates. So there are a variety of templates there to choose from. Um, and I showed you some very basic changes that we could make by editing the page. So again, there's as a site owner, you have two edit buttons here. So one on the right hand side where you would edit the page and one here top middle where you would edit the navigation. So we will look at that in just a minute. So again, if I hit this edit button over here, 
uh, we spoke about having different sections on the page. So we added in a right section here where uh, we kind of discussed really maximizing some of that page real estate by uh, implementing a right hand column and creating some web parts in there. We have quick links. We have a news web part. You'll notice as I float the cursor over it, the little border pops up. Uh, so these can be moved around so I could easily uh, click and drag. Um, I can add new web parts by if I float the cursor here, a little plus sign pops up and from there I'd be able to add in additional web parts. Uh, we we also discussed adding in sections. So this is kind of adding in sections onto your page to add additional content. And this can be done by clicking on the little blue plus here on the left hand side. Also here you could edit the section. So if I click on edit, um, I can change things like how many columns I have um, and what background colors I would want to utilize. Um, I just noticed here, Nate, they've added in some new background colors, which is always fun <laughs> as you're doing demos to notice that new things were added since the last session. So that's always um, interesting to see. Um, all right. Uh, so that's kind of what we covered in the last session. Um, one of the concepts that we talked about was kind of best practice on the layout. Um, I always recommend that you try to keep it as uncluttered as possible, especially the landing page. Think of it as a dashboard and from there we would want people to link to other additional pages or additional resources. Um, having too much content or having it go down too far down the page, people are, are much less likely to actually go hunt for stuff. Uh, in my experience, so I try to keep it as clean and uncluttered as possible. All right, so in this particular uh, example, I'm just going to hit the republish button. And I want to show you how you from here can add in additional pages and then link to those. So in our hero web part, which is this visual web part here at the top of the page, uh, we have two tiles that we created in the last session, but we didn't actually link it to anything. One is uh, something to link to employee resources and one is a tile that would link to onboarding. This is uh, particularly useful I've noticed as we do work with clients um, as a new employee you kind of don't you're a little lost when you first start and you know trying to find all the different policies and procedures and handbooks and things like that or maybe a checklist of things that you need to do within like the first 30 days 60 days 90 days um, can be a little uh, daunting for new employees so one recommendation that I make is to actually have a page set up or an area set up in your site uh, where a new employee can go and find a checklist of resources, videos, training, you know, checklist, whatever that looks like in your organization. It just makes it so much easier for them um, if they can find everything they need in one spot. So we're going to create a page to do exactly that. I'm going to do one for new employee onboarding. Um, and to do that, I head over here top left. Uh, there's a new button and you'll notice if I click on that, there's a couple of different things that I can actually create from here. So I can do list. I can create an additional document library. Remember that you do get a default document library with the site that you've created, but if you wanted to, you could create additional ones. So maybe you want, had two very separate uh, categories of information and you wanted them to be um, in different document libraries or maybe had different metadata. We spoke about this in the document uh, collaboration um, discussion um, and you wanted those to look very different, you can create additional ones. Um, and the the third option here is to create a page. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go and create a new page. A couple of uh, templates to pick from. I just usually just go with the easy one, the basic text, and click on create a page. And very similar to how we actually edited the site, I can go and make edits to this page uh, by simply clicking on it. Again, I can add in additional web parts here. I can just kind of like working in a Word or a PowerPoint document, I can go and edit the text pretty easily um, and the same with the heading. So let's start off here at the top and we're going to say a new employee, oops, onboarding. Um, top left here, I can change the image. So again, we have quite a number of stock images that come with our 365 subscription. Um, I am going to, and then you can search. So if I say office, um, I can get quite a few resources that are related to office and people in an office. 
So I'm just going to pick a random picture over there. Um, with this little uh, button here, the set image focal point, I can move it up and down so I can position it very nicely, pretty easily. So again, no code required, uh, nothing, you know, no developer skills or anything like that. It's actually pretty easy and pretty intuitive. So just to make this a little bit easier, um, I'm going to remove this little web part, this text web part. So if I click on it, <clears throat> excuse me, click on the uh, trash can, I do want to give them very quick access into our HR document. So I'm going to pull in our document library, kind of create a shortcut for them there. So if I float the cursor, click on the plus, um, I can either uh, search through here, you'll see it is uh, at the top of my list, or I could just type in document library. So that's what I'm going to do. So these are the document libraries that are currently attached to my site. Uh, just as a side note, style library, site pages, site assets, those are kind of default libraries that, where all of your photographs, logos, and all of those templates kind of reside. So don't worry about them too much. But I have my own document library called HR Resources. So I'm going to click on that. And there we go. Really nice and easy. Um, it's a uh, I always see it as multiple ways to get to the same thing. Uh, so yeah, there's still only one document library, but I'm just making it a lot more easy um, and accessible for new employees to find. So this uh, sectioning here is a little squished. So if I go here to the left hand side, I can say edit section and maybe I would rather make this a one third lift just to kind of have that display a little bit better. All right. Um, and then below here, I might want to put in a video. Let's say I want to put in a little uh, YouTube video that has some training or a welcome video. So I'm going to choose YouTube right there. And remember that with every web part that I click on, there's a little pencil icon. And with that, I will see the properties on the right to fly out panel. So here it's looking for YouTube code. So I'm just going to head over here to our MyTech Partners uh, YouTube channel. And let's say here's a video in here that I wanted them to see. So I'm going to right click on there, uh, copy that um, a URL. And uh, here in the YouTube code, just paste the code in there. All right, and you'll see a little preview will pop up there. There we go. Really easy to do. Um, so any other uh, resources or useful training videos that you wanted to link in there really easily. And let's say down here, uh, we wanted to create um, a checklist. So I'm just going to just delete this here really quickly. So this is going to be uh, a new employee onboarding checklist and this could be in any format maybe you already have an existing um, excel document or maybe you're utilizing a sharepoint list we've found that that works really well but for this example i'm just going to put in a, a few bullets here okay um, and while you're doing that nina one. let me, you yeah. know i'll, I'll just kind of chime in on like if some you, if you're a department head right now and you're thinking gosh this feels overwhelming this is um and, and why would i be doing this versus somebody in it um and i think conceptually that it doesn't have to be a, a department head in fact some department heads might not be the right technically savvy ones to do this they might feel uncomfortable doing it so maybe you, you find a champion on their team but the theory around this and the reason why we're focusing initially on a sharepoint site uh that might be considered for a department like hr is that that way you can delegate responsibility to people in the HR department to communicate things about HR. You don't have to go to IT to post something. You don't have to, have to go to marketing to post something. You don't have to have a marketing IT uh, operations and HR site because different people might want to have different layouts. So you're not going to create conflicts as far as how different people might want to try and manage their own pages and their own communication. So the concept here, and I think it's, it's uh, I really do appreciate how Microsoft has built this out is that you as a department, whether you're the department head or a champion or power user inside of that department, can really have the authority to be able to communicate things relative to your department out to the organization and design it in a way that you feel is the most intuitive for the for your audience, right? And so as opposed to uh, having one site where everyone uh, manages and everyone can have the opportunity to design their own thing, uh, you could kind of uh, chaos could ensue. So there's definitely some training going on, but I think what Nina has shown, I'm sorry, Nina, I'm, I, I want to buy you time to, to, to write some of that stuff, but what Nina's showing is that it, there, there's a lot of pieces to it, but when you when you break it down to the individual parts, each individual part is basically the same as far as how you click the little edit button and you can pull in different pieces. And so just trying to, and I uh, just trying to 
lower the anxiety if you're not a technical person where you're really about like if I'm an HR department head, uh, but I don't feel comfortable with this stuff. Um, that, that's why we're trying to go through this uh, to, to, at, at an at a individual site level um, to hopefully help cascade the concept that I, we feel has been successful across a lot of clients we've worked with. Sorry, Nina, hopefully that a little yeah, extra perfect. context as you're navigating through your agenda. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and th that kind of um, distributed responsibility is a model that I found with clients works really well. Um, I will probably just touch on the permissions just again, just, just those those three out of the box permissions where are really your site owners and then your uh, members or contributors. And then, you know, really the, the larger organization are those visitors or read only uh, permissions. And what works really well is that maybe as an HR uh, you know, the head of HR, maybe you are a site owner, but you have one or two people that are helping to kind of keep that content up to date. Um, obviously, stale content means that people won't come back. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, having having people to help you and not, as, as you mentioned, having to go through an IT department or put in a ticket to get something as silly as content up to date um, it just seems to work really, really well. All right, so this is a very basic employee onboarding page, but um, at least it just shows you how you can pull in things like a document library, a video, a text. Um, I'll show you in a minute how to add some additional stuff in there as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the publish button. And very importantly, I want you to see what pops up the minute I do that. So there's a couple of different options. Once the page is published, I can add it to the navigation if I wanted to. I could share the page via email uh, or you know via Teams chat. Um, so a couple of different op uh, options there on what I could do for this particular example. Remember, I want to link it to that initial um, hero web part on the main page. So I'm going to say copy link to page. But I will show you where that page now resides because, as I said earlier, this has happened to me many times, um, especially on my, uh, you know, starting out on my SharePoint journey. Um, I would create the page, publish it, forget to copy the link, and then navigate away and then not know how to get back to it again. So I will show that in just a minute. All right, so we've copied the link. I'm going to go back to the home page. And now I want to link it up to the new employee onboarding tile. So I'm going to hit the edit button. I'm going to click on that tile. You may have to click twice because once selects the whole Euro web part and the second click will actually click on the tile. Click on the little pencil and right at the top there you'll see at the moment it's linked to um, just the site itself. So I want to actually change that to link to the new page that I created. On the left hand side click from a link and paste in the URL that I just copied when I published and click on add. And I'm going to go ahead and say republish and let's just test that it works. Always good to do. So if I click new employee onboarding, it will take me to the new employee onboarding page. All right. So quickly, where does this all live? So top right here, little gear icon, which takes me to my settings. Um, and then I go to site contents site pages. Remember earlier I was saying that there's a library specifically for all of the contents of your site um, and you'll see there it is new employee onboarding. Um, I will say in the in the previous session we talked about adding news articles. I will show you again just really quickly how to do that. So news and any additional pages you create all live here in the site contents uh, library. Uh, so if you've created news articles and you want to go back and edit them, this is where you would do it as well. So let me just show that really quickly. I'm going to go back here to home. And I think we did create a very brief little news article here. It was called My Awesome News in the previous one. I'm going to add one more in there just to show you. So I'm going to click on add. Now I could do a post, which is my own news that I've generated similar to creating the page that I just did, or I could link it to an existing external website. So I just opened one up here. Uh, it's kind of an HR uh, news article on how to identify and retain talent. I'm going to go ahead and copy that URL just to demonstrate how we can link to that uh, news article. So again, click add, news link, paste the link in there. See it's uh, now connecting to that page. It pulled the, the picture from that page as well. And I'm going to go ahead and hit post. All right, so I can do my own again, or I can link to other news articles. And we kind of use a combination of the both. It works really well. 
And hey, Nina, can you talk about um, one of the things that I like about news is how some of the automatic notifications happen when there's like where it can sometimes email folks, hey, this is what's happened in SharePoint if someone publishes um, because posting it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone necessarily knows it's there unless there's some sort of notification. Isn't there some sort of built in notification relative to news? So we're going to probably dig into that a lot more with Viva Connections. Oh, uh, let me go into this news article here. I will show one other way. Uh, so you can actually promote the news article as well uh, so that there's, uh, you know, and, and you can also encourage people to follow as well. Um, Oh, you'll see there's a little following up here. Um, but when we get into the Aviva connections, there's a way that that news will actually be posted, um, you know, across the organization, probably in a better way than what SharePoint on its own will do. Nice. So I knew there was a way to do it, so sorry to derail. Yeah, right. no, no, <laughs> just, no worries. I, I think that's a really cool feature because, I yes. mean, I think that, that's one of the gaps I think that a lot of organizations face is they feel like, well, I'm missing communication or I'm not, I don't feel like I'm being updated. Um, and that's hard across, I mean, every organization struggles with communication and collaboration. So I just think that that feature um, is really powerful to help make sure that everyone in the organization gets notified of things that are really critical to be notified about, um, but yet also driving them to the, the SharePoint portal and all that. So sorry for the, so the, here's a foreshadowing, I guess. For, yes. <laughs> for yes. we'll touch on that. <laughs> uh, that versus because I think on its, own, it's, the, on its own, it's okay, but I, the, I think the real power comes in with leveraging Viva Connections, because I know you probably get notified on your phone as well, mm -hmm. which I think is like a really added benefit of, of kind of Viva Connections and staying on top of some of that news. So yeah, definitely want to touch on that in the next session for sure. Um, one quick other thing that I wanted to show here on this uh, main page while we're here, um, I actually created a form in Microsoft Forms. Um, so it's a training survey. Um, and I wanted to just, that's kind of part of our HR function. We want to know what training you attended and how would you rate it. Uh, so that's a great example of how we could utilize forms. But then how do we actually pull that form into SharePoint and how do we use it there? Like, you know, is it just a standalone thing or, or can we integrate? Uh, so I love any kind of integration, you know, we just spoke about Weaver Connections, but uh, any integration that SharePoint might have with other 365 apps to me is always a bonus. Um, so I'm going to just go and edit this page and I want to show you how to actually add a form onto your page. So I'm going to scroll down here just a little and down here, click on the plus sign. Uh, we're going to look for forms specifically. So there we go. And I can either add, create a new form or add an existing form. So for the sake of this uh, demo, I've already created it. And let me go over here to forms. All right, you're gonna just uh, click on collect responses because in here, I'd like to get a hold of that link. So I'm gonna copy the link. And then back on the HR side, if, again, if I click on the pencil, I get the little properties window that kind of flies out from the right hand side. And then we're going to paste it in there. Oh, and click on OK. Right. And there's my training survey. It's embedded on the SharePoint page um, and click on republish. So again, as I said, mentioned earlier, I wouldn't have that page be too long. So potentially what would be better is to actually create another page uh, where you have your survey and then link that um, either using these quick links on the right hand side or using your um, hero web part. So I'm kind of going against what I just suggested, but in the mm -hmm. interest of time, I'm just going to embed it on this home page just for you to be able to see how that works. Nate, you look like you have a, a yeah, comment. Well, I was thinking, yeah, because I think, I think it, it, this is a great example, too, of where depending on visually and navigation and design, depending on how, um, uh, I don't know, I'm going to use the word that's coming on, persnickety you are about that, right? You might choose it because, like, you had some good imagery behind that. So, like, like where I, I wonder if you could just quickly illustrate, because I know it won't take you more than a minute is under the things you can do here, if you could create a button that would then link to that form as opposed to embed it. So like just illustrating like how you could do both. Um, and again, this could be and or or both, right? And or uh, like, you know, how you how you link stuff. So, um, you know, just creating, yeah, just having some sort of a button. We well, don't have to do a new page. I was just thinking like a, a, a button just, that, would, that would link to it, but either way it works, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, I just I felt it's kind of better to keep it in the SharePoint site. So, oh sure, it's just yeah, and it's quick enough. We can do it really quick. Forms, 
There we go, add an existing form. I think that link still works. There we go. Uh, click on publish. And you could link to the form itself. I just kind of find it looks uh, kind of looks better um, on a page like this. I'm going to copy that link really quickly. And go back here to the home. So very similar to how we just did it with the new employee tile. I'm going to click on edit. And we're going to add in a link here. So I'm going to say this is where to go to this page. Click on add. And it even picked up that it's a training survey bonus, so I don't even have to change the title there. Uh, you can also change the order of the links by kind of similar to the web page, just clicking and dragging. But I think that that looks good and republish. And yeah, all, as was... always, good to test. <laughs> there yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah, that's just again, I, 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 what I appreciate about you dynamically just doing that is that again, it, it took you probably less than 60 seconds to do that if you already had the form built. Um, and you know you might have preferences about where where and how you might want to link things uh, for just the way it looks, for the ease of access or to highlight certain areas. Um, and so it's it it's not um, it's detailed, but once you learn it, it's not that hard, right? It's it's not that difficult to do. Like like Nina said before, it's not code, you know, I'm doing that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but it is thinking about the layout and thinking about your audience, thinking about ease of access, it does, that's probably the harder part of it than, than actually making the clicks to, to get it to work. Yeah, and if I can give any suggestion here with like the different web parts and what they do is create a test site for yourself and just go and play. Like there's unfortunately not enough time to go through every single web part and exactly what they do. But um, that in my experience is the best way to figure it out is just to play, just add things to your test page, see what it does, uh, you know, try it out. That, that really is the best way to learn as with most things. Well, and the other thing about that too, and I know we touched on this, I think last session, but to to re reinforce, you you can create a site without and play and do all the things that, that Nina just talked about without having it publicly available to everyone in the organization, right? So you don't have to worry about everyone seeing your playground, if you will, if you're just trying to make, uh, just trying to figure stuff out. Like you don't have to let people, other people have access to it in the organization until or if you want to. And so if you, as long as you have the ability to create a SharePoint site. So um, that's, that's something that I know people have, have worried about. And also if you have an existing SharePoint infrastructure, the other way this works is you can build out site by site, page by page, the infrastructure before the, 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 an alternate uh, um, sites or alternate structure without giving everyone access to it. And then when you're ready, you can then kind of switch everybody over to it. So that's something Nina's going to talk about next time as well, um, mm -hmm. pulling, the, pulling the hub sites together. But sorry, I've, I feel like I'm derailing you a little bit, Nina. I want to make sure you get through everything you wanted to cover today. No worries. Last thing with the time remaining that I want to touch on is just the navigation. And we are going to dig into navigation a whole lot more in the next session as we kind of bring the collective sites together. But just a really quick, uh, like the how to here on like your site navigation. Um, so this is the edit button in the middle, not the one on the right. So I'm going to click there on edit. Uh, and for those of you familiar with OneNote and how you have pages and sub pages, this kind of acts in the same way. So these, uh, the headings that are very left aligned here are really these top level headings um, and then the kind of sub subheadings underneath them are the ones that kind of cascade into um, the ones underneath it. Um, how do we add it? So uh, let's say this page that we just created, the survey, um, I'm going to actually remove the how we work. We don't need this for this particular site. So I'm going to click on the, the uh, little breadcrumbs there and just remove it completely. Same thing with who we are. I'm going to click there and say remove. But I do want them to fill out a survey for me. So I'm going to click on plus. I have two options there to do a link, which is obviously the URL or a label. And I'll talk a little bit more about labels in the next session as well, because it's a great way to use uh, to set up your navigation to see what it potentially will look like without maybe having those pages ready to go yet. But you do want to kind of wireframe it, if you will. Um, and labels are a great way to do that. But for this one, we have a link. I'm going to put in the address there and I'm going to say uh, employee survey and click on OK. So right now, if I click on Save, you'll see how that's changed. Employee Survey now lives underneath um, Resources. Um, so 
you'll see with the navigation, this is currently set to mega menu. So I want this to just look like a very normal cascading menu. Uh, just a quick uh, refresh on how to do that. Just settings, change the look. Uh, my, uh, oh, sorry, navigation. Uh, so at the moment it's set to a mega menu. I'm just going to change it to a normal cascading menu. We don't have that many links that we need a mega menu. So just a normal cascading menu and close out of there. So this is what that would look like. So more of a kind of just a normal drop down menu. Um, but let's say I, I don't actually want employee survey to be a part of resources. I want it to be a standalone link. So if I go back into edit, what I'm going to do is click on the breadcrumbs and then say promote it so that it's kind of a main link. So if I click on save there, you'll see that it will pop up as its own link. So some of those best practices and things around navigation, especially as we start looking at global or hub navigation, we'll kind of discuss those in the next session a little bit more. But that's just a little quick intro onto site navigation. Nina, could you show one more thing? Because you were right yep. there, but I, I like to call it out too, is um, and click on the edit for employee survey where you click on the little breadcrumbs. Um, mm -hmm. One of the options, just the edit, the yeah, edit there. Um, one of the options on these pages, notice there's a little checkbox that says open a new tab. Like you may want to, you know, this is like, uh, you know, you may go to uh, public websites, right? And sometimes you click on a link and it, uh, it's hard, it takes you away from where you are, but you could choose whether or not it opens when, you, when somebody clicks on it, if it opens a new tab or within the same tab. Um, so again, I'm not saying either one's right or wrong. It's just, I like to show that's a little spot that you can uh, customize on each basically uh, link. Age. Yeah, and I actually let me demonstrate that just really quickly before we wrap up here. So a great use case for mm. HR is there's usually external HR systems that we want to create shortcuts to. So ADP or whatever your HR system is, and we want to make it really quick and easy for people to get there. So I'm going to just use that URL and on the HR site, I'm going to add it in here. Um, the link to ADP and we're going to say ADP or whatever your HR system is, ADP login. Um, and again, as Nate said, if it's external, I always like to make it open up in a new tab. Otherwise, it just kind of gets confusing and mm -hmm. people are like, where did my SharePoint go? Uh, so that's a good, uh, a good best practice for external. So I'm going to click on OK and click on save. Um, one last thing I just want to note here is that sometimes you'll see that there's a little bit of duplication when it comes to uh, setting up navigation. So you may have the ADP login here as well as at the top, or maybe there's some overlap here with the Hero Web Pod. Um, don't worry about that too much. In my experience, uh, different people look for links in different places, and mm -hmm. so I do tend to have a little bit of overlap with that. And we'll we'll look at that in more detail as well in that kind of how we set it up for you know globally as well. But you know, some people are very visual, and you know they see that hero web part first. Other people tend to look for you know links at the top, like I do. Or maybe as they're kind of navigating in the site itself, they may be looking for it in quick links. So just a quick note there, if you do find, if you're thinking, where should I put it? Should, should the link be here, here or here? Um, try it out. Uh, I usually recommend having a small group of people that are kind of act as your focus group um, and have them test it for you and say, hey, you know, I really struggle to find it or hey, this really works well the way that you've set it up. It's always good to test it out. So that's kind of my final note there before um, uh, we maybe open this up to Q&A. Yeah, Nina, thank you. So uh, look, everyone, thanks for watching this session. We're, we try to break these down into bite-sized chunks uh, relative to um, all that is, and we, we're, we're not even getting into everything, of course, but these are some of the high level things that we really try and work on that if you're consider if this is something you're doing as an organization, you're trying to drive adoption, uh, and you've, you've spent some time and effort maybe making sure your, uh, your teams are set right and your SharePoint sites are set right, or at least the conceptually design of them, this is the last piece, right, is really putting it all together into SharePoint, making it easy for your team to access, easy for your team to search, easy for you as the different departments to communicate out to your, to out to your organization and your, and your team based on things that you might want to communicate. So uh, thanks for watching session eight. Uh, again, session nine uh, next month, we're actually going to be getting into taking, imagine you have uh, five of these different sites. Maybe, I don't know, I'm picking a random number, but it could be 10. It could be 100. Uh, probably not 100, but but maybe you would. I don't know. Um, but, but let's say you have several different department sites. Well, how do you 
pull those all together into a more global uh, SharePoint hub or portal or intranet uh, that then allows you to connect it into Teams and make it easy for your team to access and intuitive for your team to access. So that's uh, what we're uh, going to cover next time. And we had a little foreshadowing on that today. Uh, so we're excited about that. But afterwards, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to foreshadow even further. We're going to be digging into Copilot. So stay tuned for that. Uh, there'll be a lot more information we're sharing there. So I've got to note that there's no questions right now from the live audience. Uh, so no worries. Thanks a lot for watching and attending. Nina, any final words before we sign off? No, nothing from me. Thanks for joining. All right. Thanks, everybody. Until, until next time, uh, be productive and stay secure.